Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly value, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your hostess, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So we are quickly coming towards the end of season two. This is pretty much the penultimate episode. Um, there are eight episodes in total for season two, but episode I won't. Uh, episode eight is more of a review. Uh, uh, like a recap of the entire season. Episode seven is actually the um, season finale. So you're going to get that review next week. But this time we're doing a review of co-parenting with the Spurlings. And this was a really interesting um, episode. This is season two, episode six called Family Retreat. Of course, the uh, link is going to be in the description so that you can take a look at the entire episode for yourself. Um, so this one was really interesting because it focused on the actual co-parenting. So uh, Dennis takes his sons and takes Stephanie um, on like a family retreat. It was like a community outing for and where they, they learned gardening and all of these other sorts of things. And they ended up having like, um, I want to say, I don't want to say a seminar or conference or what have you, but for lack of a better term, like a seminar about co-parenting. And so there were other, um, individuals, other parents there, um, who were in attendance, who shared their stories about co-parenting, uh, shared what worked, what didn't work, you know, and it was basically sort of a learning experience for everyone. Uh, at this retreat, Dennis and Stephanie discussed their style of co-parenting, how that's been working, times where it didn't work, times where it was very challenging for them to try to come together to a point where they can uh, co-parent effectively and things of that nature. So that entire experience, you got to see a couple of things. You got to see a little glimpse of what Dennis and Stephanie looked like before the divorce, before things became so unsustainable in their relationship that they could no longer remain a couple. You got to see some of the qualities that attracted them to one another at one point in time. That friendship and that familiarity is what I'm referring to. The knowing each other, knowing, you know what I'm saying, how to really talk to each other. It was an interesting thing because although they were there with the children and it was a communal thing, that they were doing, it almost put some of the guard down a little bit. And you know that there are always guards up, but it sort of put them down just enough to sort of see what the old Dennis and Stephanie might have looked like. What might they have, what did they look like when they were when they were together, right? Before things turned, took a left turn. So I thought that that was interesting because once you're with a person like that, you never forget who they are. And even though you can't, there are lots of times where you can't go back. You cannot reverse time and go back to feeling, feeling for that person the same way you used to feel just because too many things have happened uh, between the time that you loved each other and the time that you really don't. And you could see that they got, they've got, they've got that familiar familiarity. I'm, I kind of don't want to say they got love for each other, although that's prob that's more that's probably most accurate. Not the active romantic love, but the I've been knowing you too long, not to care about what's going on with you. 
type of thing. And so that was interesting. The other interesting part is that when they were at this meeting conference, you know, where they were speaking to other parents, Stephanie admits to her being immature in the beginning. And so by being hurt over the whole divorce, over the, you know, the marriage breaking up, the relationship breaking up, um, being petty, being petty with Dennis right? Being petty with them. And you know, the first thing that they do that, 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 you know, the mother of your children or baby mamas are going to start doing is they're going to start using the kids as a sticking point. Not only are they going to use the children for leverage and an attempt at a power play in a situation where they feel powerless, because let's just be real with it. When men, when men pull the trigger on a relationship, the women are the ones that feel powerless because they didn't do it. That the relationship is over, but it's not in their control. They didn't get to say that the relationship is over. And if the man is very staunch in that decision where he's unwavering, where there is no scenario where he's coming back to this relationship with you, uh, then they really feel powerless. So the way in which so many women try to regain power in a situation where they feel out like it's out of control for them is they will overly control the kids and utilize the children as sticking points, utilize the children as a tool, both to try to control the narrative of what's about to happen after this relationship breaks and as a weapon to harm the man, something to hurt his heart, the way her feelings are hurt. And uh, unfortunately, Stephanie is not beyond that. Although in this episode, they don't get into the details of what her immaturity actually manifests itself as. We all can pretty much draw the common conclusions, right? Um, not, you can't come spend the time with them. You can't see them this week. Um, you know, and, and the little games that start getting played and things of that nature, which for a time, uh, kind of calm down because what you're seeing here is the the times that Dennis has those children what you're not seeing is the times that he doesn't right so that immaturity of I'm going to make things difficult I'm going to go out of my way to make an already difficult, challenging situation more difficult, more challenging, just because I think I'm hurting you. In the end, the children are the ones that suffer because, I mean, if I'm going to hurt their father and I'm going to use them to do the hurting, they are going to hurt, right? So then just moving on a little bit towards something else that really uh, captures your attention in this episode is when they're sitting, uh, you know, in, 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 in around each other and speaking with all of the different parents, uh, Dennis was struck by one man's story that he told about how trifling his baby mama was. So the, so the man had a, basically a really bad co-parenting story where, the baby mama ended up sending the, his children, his sons outside with, basically without any clothes on. And the humiliation to those children was, you know, unconscionable to them. And he didn't understand how a mother could do, could humiliate her children in an effort to prove a point or in an effort to hurt him. Because the excuse was, well, if you want them to have clothes, then you will bring them clothes as if they didn't have anything or if they were completely naked um, or whatever. 
And so since he didn't bring them any clothes, they had they had to be humiliated and put outside where everybody could see them and other kids could see them without any appropriate clothing on. Um, as he was telling this story, Dennis was obviously affected uh, by it because you can imagine he's thinking about his own children as this story is being told. Um, the man then goes on to say that the reason he didn't call CPS, and this isn't what I thought was important. The reason he didn't call CPS was because he didn't want the mother in jail and he didn't want his children without their mother. Now, this is a woman that has the capacity to humiliate and traumatize her children um, out of spite, right? But he doesn't call anyone on her, although he would have been well within his rights to do this. Um, because just by that, just by that revelation alone in that little part of the story, without even knowing the rest of the context of their relationship and the rest of the dynamics of their relationship, how, how do you bring yourself as a mother to put your children that you had, regardless of what you think about their dad or what their dad is doing or is not doing, how is it that you are able to put your children in a humiliating situation and be okay with it? So Dennis had a little bit of advice for him um, and was basically letting him know that take away her excuses for bad behavior as much as you reasonably can. Um, if you can bring, just bring them the clothes so that she doesn't do that again, because so your children don't suffer it. It's not even about her. It's more about what the children can't uh, uh, go through and what they don't go through. So I thought that that was a, a highly interesting episode, particularly as the one before episode seven, because episode seven is, is a doozy. Um, and so I kind of can't wait for you to hear the review of that. But we're going to go ahead and cut this short. As usual, the link to the full episode is going to be in my description box. Please go to Dennis Sperling channel and subscribe to it. Uh, you want to go back and catch all of the replays for season one and season two of co-parenting with the Sperlings. Um, also listen, jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you have not, once again, I'm your hostess, the Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye Crimsonites.